She helps organize, assist, and document the growing new thought and positive music movement. Her most favorite thing in the world is to create positive energy with like-minded people like you. So please help me welcome Jennifer Fair. Hello. Thank you, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today? Is everyone feeling good? Give me the f I, I say to my baby dancers, I teach baby dance and baby um, yoga during the week. So whenever I check in with my babies, I say, is everyone okay? Give me the fat thumbs up, because I have two fat thumbs. And so everybody's like, yes, Miss Jennifer, we're good. So today we are talking about our inner spectacular, which is nothing more than and nothing less than our inner divinity that we choose to put out into the universe, that God essence, that divine light that we have within us, that, that limitless power that we have within us, and we all have it. Whether or not you have a sparkly cool shirt like this, or you have jeans, or you have a dress, or you have slacks, or whatever you have, we all have the spectacular potential within us. And so what I'm gonna ask you to do is rub your hands together for me, place them on your heart, and uh, I'll, it'll be call and response. This is my pledge to spectacularness. It's kinda like the Pledge of Allegiance, kinda you know, took the form a little bit. And it goes like this. I pledge allegiance to myself for the miraculous state of my spectacular. And to my core essence for which I stand, one power which is love for infinity, with happiness and function for all. Abraham Hicks is a divine energy that goes around the world and many of you may have read books by Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks. And at the Agape Revelation event in April of 2011, on April 16th, this came forth from, uh, from uh, Esther and from Abraham. And it says, there isn't anything that will bog you down. There isn't anything that will burn you out. There isn't anything that can break your heart. There isn't anything that will disappoint you. There isn't anything that will hurt you in any other way. There is nothing. There is no assertion of anything unwanted. The only thing that could ever keep you from being you is you. You. Abraham Hicks also talks about the small you, which is our individual self, and the larger you, yes, which is divine collective consciousness. And so on any given moment, during any given day, it's the onus is on each one of us to take that smaller you, and really it's easy to, it's, it's small like this, it's easy if we choose to connect into it, to remember to step into the greater, the greater essence, which is the spectacularness. But we have that choice to allow ourselves to do that. We have the choice to allow ourselves to speak kindly to ourselves. We can allow ourselves to do things that make our heart sing. We can allow ourselves to forgive and to ask for forgiveness if we feel that's appropriate. It all starts with allowing that connection to be made. There is no us and them. There is no perfect me and little insufficient me. There is only one. There is only one and we are all part of it. Every single one of us. It's all about allowing ourselves to connect in and to feel that vibration.
I allow myself Oh I allow myself is freedom is it here now what is real and what is fantasy oh it's a mystery why it takes us so long But I'm choosing now To let my spirit sing Can you sing it with me? Oh, I allow myself I let it in As I begin To live my life anew And oh It's a mystery Why I hold myself down But I'm choosing now To set my spirit free Sing it with me Oh, I allow myself Oh I want you to say the word now. Here we go. Now. Allowing is the first step of connection and of remembering your spectacularness. As we said earlier, allowing ourselves to do what makes our heart sing. Allowing ourselves to know that we are a divine child of the most divine. Allowing ourselves to forgive. Sometimes you're going to be able to walk up to someone physically and you'll be able to say, I'd like to have a little talk with you. And really all I want to say is, I love you and I forgive you. And perhaps that person will say, Thank you so much. I accept, I accept that, and I, I accept that. Sometimes that person may have made their transition or may no longer be in your life. Power of Facebook and, and modern technology, you may be able to find them. You may not choose to find them. But you can still do it on a higher level. A few years back, my husband and I have now been married 28 years. I, I married him when I was five. It's true. <laughs> But yeah, with any relationship, whether it's with a parent or a partner or a sibling or with friends or with something happening in your life, it's a symbiotic relationship and it takes two to tango, right? It takes two to make that relationship work. 
And like I said before, there's the other person or situation, and here's you. That's a division. And all this stuff that may have happened that's keeping you apart, that's keeping that relationship from thriving, that's keeping you apart, what I say to that is the bigger the gap, the more room there is for spirit to come in and to do what spirit does best and provide that healing, that vibration that is needed, that compassion, that understanding, that grace. And what happens is, as spirit does its work, and as at least one of you in the situation is able to hold the high watch and to say to the person that may not physically be there, on a higher level you say, and this is what I said to my husband on my mantle, it was about this time, about 10, 15 years, it all flies by. But a while back, I had a fireplace going, and I was sitting on the hearth, rather not the mantle, that would be a trick. I'd really be spectacular. Uh, but I was sitting on the hearth, and I said, I had my higher self reach out to his higher self. And I said, husband, this is what my heart of heart desires of you. And these are the things that I have not received from you. And I forgive you. And I ask you for your forgiveness for any part I may have had in not communicating that to you in a way that you could understand. And I went on with the dialogue for about 10 minutes. I got up, went about my day. I came back and did that a couple of more times in the course of that week. And all of a sudden, things, spirit, I opened the door. I allowed myself to be the connection for spirit to come in and do its work. And suddenly, all these years later, 28 married years, 30 years together, we are as one unlike we've ever been. Sometimes you don't necessarily have to have the physical apology. Sometimes you will not receive that physical apology. But you can do it on a higher level when you find a quiet space and just do the work on your own and say, I'm connecting with you on a higher level. This is how I feel. I still myself to hear what you may be feeling, and I am open to connect with that. And I forgive you. You, got, you want to do it live? I forgive, I forgive you. I forgive all the heartache we have come to know. I forgive, I forgive you, for I know a higher way is waiting to be shown. I forgive, I forgive you, I forgive all the heartache we have come to know, I forgive, I forgive you, for I know a higher way is waiting to be shown. Darkness sometimes holds us down so deep Trapped by all the burdens that we choose to keep But oh, oh, oh I'm letting go It's time to move ahead, time to grow And so I forgive, I forgive you, I forgive all the heartaches we have come to know, I forgive, I forgive you, for I know a higher way is waiting to be shown. exist and they are real some transgressions take their time to process and heal 
But oh, 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 I'm letting go It's time to move ahead, time to grow And so I forgive, I forgive you I forgive all the heartache we have come to know I forgive, I forgive you For I know a higher way is waiting to be shown For I know a higher way is waiting to be shown For I know a higher way is waiting to be shown. Thank you. Ah, forgiveness. The greatest gift of all forgiveness and yet another step in striving for our spectacularness. And here's the beauty of it all. You don't have to strive. You don't have to struggle. You allow yourself to connect into that power. You allow yourself to step into that grace. You forgive all that other stuff. There's a pranic healing exercise Imagine you're going out every day and everyone that you come into contact with, there is a connection, kind of like a spider web, like a glowing silver cord. You're pulling out of the driveway, you run into the trash can, oh! There's a cord of connection, of negativity, that goes to the trash can for being in your way. You're on the road, you're sitting in traffic, boom, 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 cords of connection going to passers-by that may cut you off may speed past you in a really loud car. You get to work, you get to your jobs, you get to your civic organizations where you're doing volunteer work. All these cords of connection can weigh you down. And all of a sudden, you're just, you're wrapped up, you're wound up tight, right? You're wound up tight with all these cords of connection. And this pranic, it's pranic energy is what it's called, pranic healing. At the end of the day, You grab all those cords together, visualize yourselves doing this physical, well, you don't visualize, you do the physical activity and you visualize all these cords of connection. And they're right here at your core, where your core chakra is. Just imagine yourself like rock, paper, scissors, just cutting it, letting it go. And then you do it from your past, because there may be things in your past that you forgot yesterday or the day before that you brought back. And you cut that cord in the back, too. Simply letting it go. Doing what makes your heart sing is another great way to connect in. If you are in an awful job right now that is absolutely depressing you, what can you do? You might need that job because you have to have the income. I have a good friend that I saw last night. We were having a bonfire at my neighbor's house, and she and my other neighbor have recently gotten divorced. And I said, hey, how are you doing? She said, my life, I just hate my life. I hate my life right now. I don't know what to do. And she's in a, a, a job that she enjoys well enough, but she says, then I come home. I get up at, at 4 o'clock in the morning. I get to work and do my workout. I'm on flex time, so I get home by 1 in the afternoon, and there's nobody there anymore. And she said, I just hate it. I hate what's going on. And I said, Cheryl, find something that makes your heart sing. We as adults are just like children. Jesus says, come to me with the mind of a child. We are just like children in that it's all about redirecting our energy. When you're working with young children and they're starting to go off track and getting a little bit wild or or they're doing something that's not in alignment, you just gently redirect them. Well, that's what we can do with ourselves, but as adults, we forget to do that. Find things that make your heart sing. We have the High Museum here in Atlanta. We have the Fox Theater. 
We have the Braves. We have things that we can do. We have libraries we can go to. We have Joanne Fabrics and Hobby Lobby and all these places and Michaels that we can go to to get crafty things to do. Holidays are coming up. Find a group of people on Facebook. Start a group. I was talking to my friend Kristen Justice the other day, and we were bemoaning the fact that, you know, we don't, except for doing churches, we don't really get out a whole lot to do our positive music. I said, Kristen, let's just get together and have a song circle that will invite. Cynthia Hart is here today, and she's one of my good friends. It's a positive musician. And uh, I'm like, let's just get together and start a song circle. Her husband travels during the week, and she's by herself. I'm like, Kristen, let's just have a uh, get together at your house. It doesn't have to be a wild party. You know, just have everyone bring a little snicky snack and, and everyone just present their song and let us all give a little bit of feedback on it. Or, you know, we can figure out. But what I'm saying is, rather than staying stuck in victim consciousness and in sadness and in loneliness and in, oh, what am I supposed to do? You find something to do. That's when you take that little you, you connect into the higher you, and you ask for guidance. Thy will, not my will, be done. And you do what makes your heart sing. Let's do what makes our heart sing Using all the gifts we have To bring into this world today Let's do what makes our heart sing Celebrate that special thing that keeps us dancing on our way Because life's too short to settle for less So tell me why on earth would we do that? Oh, we don't want to find Ten years down the line That we chose to give in to compromise so let's do what makes our heart sing Using all the gifts we have to bring into this world today Let's do what makes our heart sing Celebrate that special thing that keeps us dancing on our way Because it's our duty to recognize the beauty Of seemingly simple moments that go by and it's our given right to shine that in a light and find a way to live a happy life. Oh, now is the time to free our minds and do what makes our hearts sing, using all the gifts we have to bring into this world today. Let's do what makes our hearts sing. Celebrate that special thing that keeps us dancing on our way. Ladies and gentlemen, this world needs your spectacular. Every second of the day, choose and allow yourself to connect in from the little you into the larger you. Choose to forgive the past so that you can move positively forward. And most importantly, do what makes your heart sing. Because that automatically makes you spectacular. Do what makes your heart sing. Oh, let's do what makes our heart sing. Let's do what makes our heart sing. Let's do what makes our heart sing. Thank you for having me today. Namaste.